Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. So, today we've got one system from the user P... dot 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 in Discord. That's the only name they have, so apologies, I don't... I think Discord had definitely some sort of username... There was some sort of recent username changing thing where you had to like put in a name for your profile and this guy just has P... dot dot dot, so... I don't know what their previous name would have been, unfortunately. But yeah, massive thank you to them, nonetheless, for sending this system in. And their system is called the Uran Anomaly. So let's go ahead and check out what this is all about. So here we go. What is this? Right, okay. And my first ever system. Oh, welcome to the party. Right, so all the way down here. So here is Uran. Okay. So, lore. The life forms on the home planet Harvos rush to find a second home as the largest moon of Harvos is currently in a death spiral and may destroy the home planet. Ooh. Okay. Right, so the star itself is classified as an A-type star. Although its surface temperature is lower than the expected 5,383 Kelvin, it has a mass of 1.65 solar masses and four times the luminosity of our sun. It has seven planets in orbit around it, and each planet at least one moon, all with a description. Very, very close. Oh, okay. Right, so the first of the planets... Tustali over here. Okay, so as we can see, it's a hot rock. So, uh, we are select it. Yep. So, 502 degrees, larger than Earth, more of a super Earth kind of build we've got going on here. Okay. Yeah, very, very hot rock there. Cool. Okay. So, the first of the planets. Oh yeah, so a dense, uh, super hot Earth with a thin atmosphere slowly being stripped away. It has an orbital period of 26 days on average. It has no moons due to the close proximity of Iran. Okay, excellent. All right, next up we got Ixa. Easy. I'm not sure how you say that. There we go. Oh, there's a nice ring, a nice golden ring around that. Cool. Has a moon as well. Right there. Pretty cool. A cool view of it from behind, uh, behind the star as well. Hey, that's got a cool image actually. So, anyways, this is the equivalent of the favourite child being the largest terrestrial and only known terrestrial with rings. It has no atmosphere and orange rock flats on its surface, which is tight and compact due to the mass of over two Earths. It has a single moon, Aeus, which only has a radius of 52 kilometers. Okay, cool. So, nice golden ring around this guy. Looking cool. Alrighty, so moving on. So now we're moving on to Harvo. So this is the planet at the top of the description mentioned about. So its moon is on a crash course, possibly. Oh, God, that is close, isn't it? Right, so here it is. So as we can see, Earth-like. So at the, at the top it here said, Harvo is currently in the death spiral and may destroy the home planet. So the moon. So that is this object here. Okay, so. The only known planet known to have life. The plants here are red due to the molecules in the atmosphere, refracting the sunlight. Harvo is similar to Ixia with... Cumulative properties seemingly identical, only varying the smallest amount. Harvard has two moons. So, yeah, that first moon is on a collision. So, that's why they need to escape this and find a new home, just in case. So, there it is. Okay. I like the red um, the red plants. Just uh, mixes things up a bit. It looks cool. Okay. Cool. And, yeah, there's the moon on a crash course. And that is dangerously close. I mean, yeah, that's a pretty wild orbit. And then... Um, Got this object here as well. Second moon, very, very green. So there's actually descriptions both of these as well. So the moon description here. So this moon here, dusk. Dusk. The, the largest moon of Harvos are over five moons in mass. It has a thin atmosphere and holds liquid water on its surface. It orbits Harvos every half a day and is growing even closer due to tidal forces. Woo -hoo. So that would have, in theory, instead of spiraling in, in theory, it could get torn up by a roosh limit first, and that would create a ring. But there could still be debris that crashes onto the planet. Maybe we'll have to simulate that. And then lastly, we've got Nombi over here. The smallest moon it has an orbital period of under seven days. Its surface is mostly green with small patches of purple. The odd palette of colours is still a mystery. Okay. Right, moving on. Further out from Harvos is a debris disk orbiting Iran, which has a small dwarf planet. So that's this area here. So we got Boss over here. Boos, Boss. So there it is. And we've got a second one here. There's a Barry Centre, so it could be a binary. Yeah, it, oh, maybe, yeah. So we've got two more objects here. So we've got Isit and Morkin. Cool. So 
that's those guys. And we lastly got Mora over here. Oh, so this is the next object out. Okay. So, Mora. This planet is around 1.5 times the mass of Earth and has three moons. It has bright blues all over the surface as well as cryovolcanoes in the north, leading to evidence of a subsurface ocean that may contain life. Cool. Okay. Has a moon as well. Just asteroid moons by the looks of things. Okay. Yeah, there they are there. Cool, cool. Uh, next up, we're taking a big jump now to Lucis T. The largest planet in the RAN system. And what 11.5 Jupiter's mass. It is thought to have devoured its sibling planets to acquire its immersed mass. This could explain the absence of planets in orbit of this, of this far from the star. Yeah, there was a big gap. Uh, Lucis has green bands and some coral coloured bands and light uh, grey blues. It has a messy ring system and four moons, much like Jupiter of the solar system. So there you go. Hey, so it's got its own like Ganymede, Callisto, Europa, Io kind of look. Yeah, okay. And then also the big ring. Cool. Next up we got um, Pio Vastin. Oh, hang on. Oh, no, we got moons as well. They got the descriptions. So this one here. Rather unremarkable, isn't it? So there it is. Next up we have got this one. Tustis, the largest moon of Lucas. It is way closer um, to the planet's size and surprisingly hasn't eaten the other moons. It holds a thin atmosphere and liquid water with snow-covered lands almost all the way around the planet. That's kind of like a Ganymede Europa kind of mixed together with an atmosphere there. Uh, then we got this one. A very scorched looking moon. And then lastly we got the smallest moon at the end, almost over here. Cool. Next up we have got this one. So, oh. This is the hardest unpronounceable planet in the... Oh, thanks. <laughs> that's a cool looking world as well, actually. I like that. So, I'll give you a hand. Blatorun. 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 Um, it has a mass of 11, 1.5, 1, yeah, 1. 1. 1 Jupiters, and has a white and tan mix of bands and a set of rings. The, the system contains only five moons. Alrighty. Cool, cool. Right, where are we? Yeah, okay, cool. So, nice set of rings, then the moons. This is a small moon, and is the Enceladus equivalent, okay. Then we've got... Nuss. This moon is smaller to honest it is also has water beneath its surface. Cool cool. Then we got Nyap. Hardly enough gravity to hold itself together. <laughs> then we have this one. Turkolib, the Titan analog of Uran. Okay. And then lastly, we've got this one. The needle in the haystack. <laughs> so there it is there. The next planet is so far is entirely surrounded in mystery, silently watching from the shadows of the system. And that's the whole description. Interesting stuff. Right, so. There's a few more objects out. So we've got this object next. So it's a little dwarf planet. Very, very small. Very, very dark. It has a good view of it there. It has a moon as well. Similar coloured moon. And then next up, I'm guessing, is the planet. Which is here. It's a gas giant. 30 masses of Earth. Has some moons very, very close to it. Let's go just flashlight for this. There you go. So, has a good view of them all. Has a ring system as well. The moons are very sort of obscure orbit shapes as well. Cool. Right, so there's both of those. Very, very nice indeed. So, there we go. That does it for this system. But I think what we'll do is, before we finish up, we'll go back to the Earth like world and simulate that little uh, collision. Between the largest moon, so where are we? Harvos, that's it. So over here. So if we just go to trails, labels, press play. So right now that's orbiting that pretty close, but yeah, he did say that the orbit is slowly decaying. So what we're going to do is we're going to slowly decrease it. And when I say slowly, I mean that did go a little fast enough. Let's just delete all the particles just to make it run smoother. Um, but eventually that's going to get closer and closer. And then the civilization on here would be getting a bit sort of uh, scared by this at this point. So we're still... I'm pressing the minus button and the orbit's increasing. Figure that out, that is. Look at that! I'm making it smaller. So what if I make it bigger? But smaller. Okay, now it's making it smaller. That's weird. 
But eventually, Rouge Limit should start to kick in, which it does. So in theory, it wouldn't just spiral in. It probably would get torn to shreds first. But then again, it would make a lot of material. But again, if it's, it could get shredded, but effectively, it will still get closer and closer. It's so weird how it is getting further out, even though I'm pressing the minus button. So we'll just manually do it then. But there you go. So eventually, Rouge Limit will shred this. So we're creating a lot of debris around the parent planet. But maybe eventually it still does spiral in. It doesn't shred it quick enough, maybe. And it does sort of pull itself in. So there you go. Maybe it's a tad closer until it literally does go in. So if we just look here. Just a theory, of course. But there you go. So that looks like it's going to go in. Oh, my God. That is, that's going in. Yeah, that's definitely going in. Oh, yeah. It's going to create a big slosh along the side. A big scrape. Look at that. Oh, my God. It's just sliding along. Look at that shockwave. Oh, my God. Is it going to go in? Oh, it's actually just... It's broken away. It's sliding away. What? It's actually pulled away from it. How is that a thing? It's scraped along the side. Then it just sort of broke away. Now, we're not having that. It's got to go in. Oi. In. Go in the thing. <laughs> it's still trying to break away. Zero velocity. Get out of it. You're going in. What? Go in the planet. We're trying to do an experiment here. There you go. That's more like it. Yeah, that, that's what you'd get. So, it maybe Rouge Limit would tear it up a bit, but eventually it probably looks like it would fall in with a bit of manual help, apparently. But, there you go. So, that would create a huge, huge colossal of material sprung everywhere. So, that would kill everyone on that planet, for sure. Let's let time down and see what remains of this thing. So, who? So... What would remain afterwards from this massive catastrophe? Yeah, that planet isn't looking too good anymore, is it? Look at the state of that. If you look underneath, yeah, that is looking pretty barren. And all the water's gone as well, so that would eventually kill that. But there you go. So that does it for this system. But if we just get a line up here, very, very nice indeed. So it was a cool little system. I enjoyed that. Nice uh, description for everything. Pretty interesting to read, had me enticed. So, yeah, very nice. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it just as much as me. So, with that all said and done, guys. With that all said and done, yep, like I said, make sure you press that like button if you haven't already. Make sure you press that subscribe button as well. Helps in the journey to 30,000 subscribers. We're closer and closer every day. Yeah, we're under the 200 mark, so our goal is to try and get it before the end of August. That would be absolutely amazing. Really, really appreciate all the support you guys have been giving as well. It means the world. It's absolutely amazing. And yeah, that all said and done, guys. Make sure you stay safe there. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.